Ward. All right. Uh, first, Doctor, can I just have you say and spell your name for us, please? Sure. My name is Christopher Seymour. Uh, last name is spelled S-E-Y-M-O-U-R. All right. And then what's your position with uh, UPMC? Yeah, I'm an associate professor of critical care and emergency medicine at University of Pittsburgh and UPMC. Okay. And just to make sure you consent to this uh, video call being recorded then. Yes. Okay. Uh, so talk to me about this, uh, I guess, what would you call it? Like trial, uh, drug trial or study? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so yesterday we learned in a publication in one of our largest medical journals, JAMA, that corticosteroids uh, save lives uh, in patients with COVID-19. We had had a sense of this from earlier work in something called the recovery trial uh, that was conducted in the United Kingdom months ago. Uh, but that finding that corticosteroids could help was confirmed uh, yesterday in uh, four additional trials and a meta-analysis of all the data from around the world. And how big is this that something that looks like it's relatively um, available and really not too expensive either? How big is this in the fight to get people treated for COVID? This is a terrific step forward. Uh, many of the treatments that have been tested so far uh, are small molecules. They may be hard to make and expensive, but corticosteroids are cheap and they're accessible everywhere in the world. And in looking at this, you guys did this from March to June in hospitals all across the world, uh, actually, for that matter. And it looks like it came up with some pretty positive results. Sure. So uh, there were many findings from this study, uh, but most importantly, patients who were sick enough to require organ support or be in an intensive care unit, perhaps even with a breathing tube, were more likely to survive uh, and have fewer days requiring that support when they received the steroids. And then I saw the WHO, they van out changed their um, treatment guidance because of this. So are they going to start trying to recommend other people or other hospitals, other countries start using this then? Uh, sure. So the WHO uh, revised their guidelines. This is now the standard of care. If you're sick enough to be in the intensive care unit and require these types of organ support like ventilators, you should be being treated with steroids. So could this really help us get people out of the hospital quicker then and uh, help them obviously then survive the virus? I think so. Uh, we still have some unanswered questions. Uh, when should the steroids start? Um, should we use, be using even a higher dose? And what about patients with only mild or moderate disease? Those are open questions. But if you're quite sick and you're in the ICU, uh, this medicine will likely help you leave the ICU quicker and probably more likely to survive. I guess for someone watching this at home with this revelation, does this help us get back to normal sooner? Does this help ease some of those restrictions maybe we're seeing on gatherings and people having to wear masks in public? Uh, I don't know. It, in part, uh, this treatment is for patients who already have the virus uh, and who are sick enough to be in the hospital. I think uh, what, we've, what we need to get back to normal, of course, is a vaccine. Uh, and a lots of effort is working on doing that to prevent COVID from even getting this bad. Now, with you guys being a part of this study, um, were you guys surprised to see that this steroid was so effective and now that it's really changing the game? Yeah, it's a very surprising result. So we've been testing corticosteroids in critically ill patients for 20, 30 years uh, and never found a benefit like this before. Uh, but yesterday we learned uh, in many trials conducted by different investigators in different countries uh, that for COVID-19, the signal was all in the same direction. They helped in each trial. And I guess what made you guys decide, if this, if this was that surprising, what made you guys decide to use corticosteroids in this trial? Yeah, so among the many choices of things to test for COVID-19, some of the earlier treatments put into randomized trials were those that were cheap, accessible to everyone, and those in which we understood the safety profile. And corticosteroids fit the bill, uh, and so they were entered into our trials early. Okay, so this is something that should be pretty much readily available at any hospital then. Uh, we would think that almost every hospital in the United States, if not elsewhere around the world, would have access to these uh, medicines. And in fact, it wasn't just one type of steroid, but multiple different types of steroids all had the same treatment benefit. Okay. Was it just Cortico, I guess, is the premier one then, I guess, for this study? So think about corticosteroids as an umbrella term. Uh, it's a class of drugs. And inside that are different ones that were tested, dexamethasone, hydrocortisone, and others. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. Um, and then, 
I guess when I think of something else, is there anything else you'd want to add? Anything we haven't talked about yet that you'd want to uh, talk about there, doctor? Well, I think it's important to remember that even in patients treated with corticosteroids, a large proportion of them still didn't survive. This isn't a cure and we have much more to learn. And so many of the trial networks that are participating in the results from yesterday are still testing additional therapies to, to treat patients in combination. So really, uh, like you were saying, so this isn't a cure, this is just a treatment, but right now it looks like a very effective treatment. It's the best we have. Okay. Um, all right. I think, yeah, I think we had a lot there. I, I appreciate your time this morning, doctor. Thank you. No problem. Have a good one, Chris. Have a good one.